right, so we're wrapping up this section on transformations with con positions of transformations. Sorry, com compositions of transformations. So compositions, again, what does compositions mean? What do you think? If you, if you like, are creating a composition or if I'm like composing something, what am I doing? Making, Making something, I'm like putting things together. So a composition of transformations is essentially taking multiple transformations and doing them at the same time. So combining like a reflection with a rotation or a, a slide with a flip, something like that. So essentially what we're gonna do today is figure out what those are and then what they would look like. So a composition is one transformation that is then followed by another. For example, a glide reflection is a composition, a composition of a translation and a reflection. So take a look at original JKL. First, it slides to here. That's the first translation along vector V. And then what happens to it? It reflects down. So JKL to JKL prime is the green one actually a shape? No. No, that's just basically a what? Outline. It's an outline that's telling you like the first thing happened, here's where it was, but it doesn't stay there because it then reflects over line L. So what you'd be asked to do is you would be given JKL and JKL prime and you would have to describe to me what happened. So you would say it was translated and then reflected over line L. If it's done in a coordinate plane, you're gonna tell me by how much, which essentially would just be like, it was translated three right and two, it wasn't translated over at all, and then it was reflected over whatever horizontal line that is. Does that make sense? So it's just putting together what we've done, okay? So right here, this composition of is isometries is reflecting ABC across line L and then translating it along V. So what's gonna happen first? It's going to reflect. So the first thing that happens is it flips over line L. So if I flip it, it's going to now look like B prime would be right here. Give me a second. That was way off. Oh. That was way off, yeah. All right, so B prime would be like right here. Now it's not gonna work at all. Good. All right, much better. Okay, and then C prime would be up here and A prime would be down here. Is this an actual thing though? No, no because then I have to do what with it? Translate it where? Uh, up to the... That way. that way, which if we're talking directions would be north, north and east. east, good, northeast. And it's going to move as long as the vector is. So this point B is going to end up here, point, or sorry, this is B prime. Nope, this is B prime. So this would be C prime. Then point B is going to end up right here, B prime. And then point A would be down here, so A prime. So this, yeah, so it goes the length of that vector. So then we would take away this one, and that would be our composition of transformation. So two things happen there. <clears throat> you don't have to, just make sure this is the one that gets marked prime, because that's your final answer. Like if you need to draw the in-between, that's fine. All right, for the most part, you're doing them on a coordinate plane, and again, it's a lot easier when it's on a coordinate plane. Okay, so if RST has vertices R12, S14, and T negative three, four, if I want to rotate it 90 degrees and then reflect it across the y-axis, what would happen? So here's my initial points. Can anybody remember from Friday? If things rotate 90 degrees, what happens with the coordinates? I flip it and change the y negative. Good, or positive, just change the y, right? So my middle point would become what? This one would be negative two, one. Good, negative four, negative three. So that's after the 90 degree rotation. Okay, and then my last one, which would be my prime, 
when I reflect it across the y-axis, so y-axis is the vertical, which means it's folding over that way, so what changes then? The x becomes, do the numbers change or just the sign? Just the sign. So the x changes, y stays the same, so what would be my new point? 2, 1, Two, one. Four, one. 4, 1, and 4, 3. Wait, four negative three. If I reflect across the y axis, so essentially on my y, if it's like something over here, let's say this were point three two, and I reflected it, it would end up over here at negative three two. Because if I reflect it over the y axis, the x changes, but the y stays the same. Okay? So essentially when you're doing compositions of transformations, what is important to know? Especially on the coordinate plane. The rules. You need to know, yeah, you need to know your rules about the negatives and the positives. What happens for the rotation of 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270? What happens when it reflects? Wait, the 90 is the just y. Slip them and the y changes. 270 is slip them and the x changes. And then 180 is just both change signs, but the order stays the same. Yep. Okay, if you had a coordinate plane, you could plot this. You don't need to. All right, we're going to skip the practice because I have a different practice I want you guys to work on. All right, and the last thing is that every single translation or rotation is equivalent to a composition of two reflections. So what that means is you can take any translation and instead of describing it as a translation, you could describe it as a reflection. So how could you reflect ABC so it looked like ABC prime? Just do, well you could slide it if it were a translation. What would be a way to describe it in terms of reflections? Flip it twice. Flip it twice, which way? Vertically or horizontally? Horizontally. If I flip this twice horizontally, it ends up looking the same except it's now over here. Yeah. So it's become a new shape. So reflecting it, basically think about it like your piece of paper right here. If I take it and I move this piece of paper, that's a translation, right? But if I take it and I flip it and then I flip it again, it looks the same, but I did it in a different way. So I reflected it twice. Now it looks the same, but it's moved position. I thought this was vertically. No, vertically would be like if I flip it. Vertically is like uh, a hot dog hamburger. Yeah, up and down is vertical. Okay, so all this theorem is saying is you can think of translations and rotations in different ways. Okay, if you take this, what is it? One way to describe it would be a rotation. How many degrees? Uh, negative 90. 90 is the same as what? 270. 270. Okay, so we can describe it a couple different ways. We can describe it as 90 degrees clockwise or 270 degrees counterclockwise. Or how else could I describe that? A flip which way? <laughs> Vertically how many times? Twice. How do you know it's twice? Why isn't it just once? Okay, if I flip this once, where's F prime? F prime would be on the bottom, but I need F prime to be where? On the top, so you have to flip it twice. Okay, so essentially, again, it's a rotation, or you can think of it as a reflection. It's just thinking about things as different compositions of transformations. Okay, you will again. All right. Okay, so I want you guys to do the exit ticket, and then I have something I want you to work on that's all on coordinate planes. And I didn't want you to do it on your boards because drawing coordinate planes is a pain, I think. So I gave you a sheet to do it that has coordinate planes on it. So that's what I want you guys to do for the practice. You can do the exit ticket first so that you're done with it, and then do the practice. Either one is fine with me.